So what does a mass shooter have in common with an Islamic terrorist? Well, they're able to create an impact that reaches beyond their own marginal insignificance. Even a small evil pebble can make large ripples expanding across the water. A loser can kill his way to fame with a bomb, a truck, or a gun. A mass shooter in a small town can hijack an entire country's attention in one <laughs> afternoon. It's the same mechanism, creating an impact beyond one statistical importance. Morbid acts bring attention. Suffering expands from the immediate victims outward through cities, then country. The media enlarges the impact. We can't help it. It's our job. But it only makes it more likely to happen again. Those new ripples persuade another fiend dying for infamy. Why do celebrities unleash attention-grabbing tantrums after a shooting? Perhaps they wish to create an impact beyond their minor importance, too. The only solution, recognize what underlies the crime, a thirst for infamy, then deny it. And then laud the citizens out there willing to risk their lives, preventing further bloodshed. That's the silver lining in this very ugly cloud. The local heroes who risked it all to stop the horror. A good guy with a gun and a good guy with a truck. Two things the media hates. Despite being terrified, a nearby Stephen Williford grabbed his gun and shot the fiend through his body armor. Johnny Langendorf then gave chase, accelerating the ghoul's demise, the coward who killed himself. It's still pretty awful, but at least this pair made it slightly less so. Those are pebbles that deserve the wider ripple. Two pebbles with the impact of a million rocks. Uh, here's tape of Johnny Langendorf, who was the guy who uh, chased down the suspect and drove him to suicide. I pulled up on the intersection and I saw the shooter coming from the cars, actually at right outside the church that were parked. His vehicle was parked, door open, engine running, and him and the neighbor across the street were both coming out about the same time, exchanging fire. And um, as he came up, he I never got a look at him. I never really saw him. I just, I saw the gunfire. The shooter got in his truck. Uh, the gentleman in the right, with the rifle came to my truck as the shooter took off and he briefly, he briefed me quickly on what had just happened and said that we had to get him and so that's what I did. You know, it's amazing the, the, the fellow, the good guy with the gun was terrified, but he still did this, these deplorables, you know, and, and there, you know, it's a fact that the duration of attack, of a gun attack totally depends on the arrival of a second gun and this shows that, I guess. Well, and the um, the sharpshooter, is what they're calling this guy, the um, Weyendorf? Um, uh, plumber. Uh, Lagendorf, excuse me. No, that was Johnny. I, yeah. I've got the, the wrong person there. But basically, he, he because he was a trained, lawful gun owner mm -hmm. uh, who was able to act quickly, was able hope, uh, hopefully able to stop uh, more carnage. Of course, we don't know exactly. If you look at Johnny there, um, able so to so calmly explain the situation and what they did. And you do have to wonder, if you were in that situation, could you have been as brave? And I think in these communities, they figure that they have no choice, right? Because if they, if they waited for the police officers, you're in a rural area, it could take another 45 minutes to an hour to get to him. Jesse, that's an important point. I just thought of that. I mean, you just thought of that, <laughs> and I'm stealing it. But the, uh, the fact that... These folks have to have guns because th this is a population, I don't know, of about 400, 800 people. I'm not yeah. sure. They're, I don't know if they have their own police force. Maybe they have one guy. I don't know. Well, Hollywood doesn't understand that because they've never been to that part of Texas. And they don't know the difference between a semi-auto and an automatic weapon. So enough with the lectures. They're such hypocrites when it comes to mass shootings and terror attacks. Look what happened in New York City. After that happened. You had a Muslim kill a bunch of innocent people and the Hollywood people said, you know what, let's not attack Islam. But then when some crazy guy shoots a bunch of Christians in a church, the Hollywood people then attack Christians for praying. Yeah. And they're so quick to politicize a mass shooting, but all of a sudden there's a terror attack in this country and, oh, you know, we can't politicize this at all. Chelsea Handler, I mean, my goodness, she didn't say a word on Twitter when the New York City terror attack happens, and then she's tweeting up a storm when this happens. And you also have the fact that 
she says that all Republicans are to blame mm -hmm. when there is a mass shooting. Well, when a Muslim kills a bunch of Christians in this country, she doesn't say all Muslims are to blame. And hell, Hollywood makes so much money glamorizing gun violence, but they don't want regular Americans to protect themselves against gun violence. And the other difference is you have radical ideology in terrorist situations that unite these people. There's usually an immigration or a foreign element involved as well. But when you have a mass shooter, there's almost never a foreign situation. It's always someone snaps like this. So it's very easy um, or easier to wage a war against terrorism because there's trace evidence. There's a foreign situation. You know they want to kill all of us just because we're Americans. But you can't fight a war against crazy. Because crazy, anybody can just flip on a dime like that and do unspeakable things to anybody at any time. And I think regular Americans understand the difference. Hollywood doesn't. Mm -hmm. I would say that Chelsea Handler was drunk when she did those tweets, but that's an insult to alcohol. <laughs> I would never do that. Uh, Kimberly, can I play? This is Donald Trump uh, labeling this incident as a mental health problem. I think that uh, mental health is your problem here. This was a... Very, based on preliminary reports, very deranged individual. Had a lot of problems over a long period of time. We have a lot of mental health problems in our country, as do other countries. But this isn't a guns situation. I mean, we could go into it, but it's a little bit soon to go into it. But fortunately, somebody else had a gun that was shooting in the opposite direction. Otherwise, it would have been as bad as it was. It would have been much worse. So he's kind of like focusing on not the tools, but the intent. Yeah. So you have a, a, a person who is mentally ill with a gun, and then you have a person who is a good person with a gun. I'm not so sure, though, that the once you label it a mental health problem, what can you do next? Because mm -hmm. a lot of people miss, like a, I think half the shooters during Obama's presidency had seen, had seek psychological help. and. Mm -hmm. Nobody caught them beforehand. Well, that's what makes it extremely challenging, right? Yeah. And people struggle when they want to, like, grasp at something and say, okay, let me explain this, let me make sense of it. And, yes, if it's your ideology and you're against, uh, you know, gun ownership and you want to right away have your kind of quick trigger response to mass shootings is, oh, blame the weapon or the implementation, you know, of evil, whether it's a vehicle, whether it's a gun, et cetera. But in this situation, I mean, the laws were, you know, followed. He wasn't allowed to uh, carry. He was allowed to own a weapon, but not to carry on his person. So he was violating the law there. It's clearly an individual who has a very disturbed past, um, assaultive conduct, domestic violence, you name it, okay? A lot of anger directed at his former in-laws, at Christians, at the situation with ha what happened with the military, where he blamed his ex-wife. So this is somebody who had made these kind of threats before. So yeah, it's the exact type of individual that you don't want to be in a possession of a weapon like this. But nevertheless, I mean, it's a tragic, uh, you know, situation. And he was very angry about that church and about Christians and an atheist. And there's a whole host of things here that sort of came together in a, a perfect storm of uh, violence and uh, horrific loss of life. I, don't, I just think you've got 330 million people. There's how do you handle, mm. like, you don't know what, what you, how can you predict something like that? There are a lot of people who don't like their in-laws. 99.99% want do not go and kill a church full of people because they don't like their in-laws. But I want to ask you something about how, why this debate afterwards never seems to go anywhere. Because, at, because immediately after, people impugn other people's motives. They say you have blood on your hands. Mm -hmm. you know, they say if you're part of NRA, you have blood on your hands. There's never any factual backup to these smears mm. and it doesn't help and it's like if we want to talk about something rather than predictably choosing our sides wouldn't it be better instead of impugning our motives talking about it right of course but it's the larger point is the one you made at the very top which is nothing ever gets done mm -hmm. and i think there's a reason that nothing ever gets done if you look at the political structure the political structure is such that the NRA puts a huge amount of money into candidates, and they have made it so that... Is that true? Yes. And you keep disproving well, hang that. on, hang All on, right. we're finished. <laughs> and it made it so that I think for Republicans, it's very difficult to say, I'm going to challenge the NRA. I'm, I'm going to take 
even moderate steps, because all of you have been talking what about... What steps? Hang on. I'm, well, no, these no, are legitimate questions. No, but it's, it's fine, but I don't interrupt you, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. but these are questions. Okay, so fine. Let me I love hearing them. your voice. Thank you, my brother. <laughs> but I'm just saying, all of you have been talking about mental illness, right? Okay, so if a Republican was to say, let's take some steps in terms of limiting access, especially to assault weapons, mm -hmm. uh, from people who have demonstrated mental health problems... Uh, guess what? The NRA would go after him. They would start scorecarding and say this person is not going to be elected. Donald Trump got a tremendous amount of money from the NRA. What is he saying over there? Oh, well, maybe it's a mental illness. You know, it's kind of early to talk about this, which is, at this point, so tired on the... Uh, I don't know if side. there's... Well, I'm just but trying to figure out what I just law, can't, but... Go I can't believe, though, people would say, oh, this is about Hollywood. Hollywood? Forget Hollywood. This is about 26 people dead while they're in church. Awful. It's unbelievable. And unbelievable is five weeks after some nutcase starts firing at people at a concert. Mm -hmm. And this comes, you know, I mean, it, it just goes on and on in America. They had a shooting in Colorado. Guy shoots three people dead. We had another shooting yesterday, even before this one, two people dead. It just goes on. Every day, the carnage. You guys talk about Chicago. And yet, why does nothing get done, in, in my opinion? Because of the power of the NRA and the power of people who say, you know what, I think this is now a cultural, highly politicized issue. If you're a good conservative, you're all about gun rights at any cost. And that is terrible. But there's an underlying, again, <clears throat> you're, you're impugning the fact that, okay, an NRA member doesn't want to get anything done. <sighs> I, the overwhelming number of NRA people are people that know how to use guns. They're law-abiding. By the They're way, law I didn't say that. I didn't say NRA members. NRA members do want something. It's the NRA that doesn't want anything. So the NRA wants more mass killings. No, but you take, for example, something like a bump stock. Remember that conversation yes, after Vegas? Yeah. Do you think anything got done? Do you think Republicans ever I addressed this in the Congress? I think they're working on it. Yeah, I thought, no. Yeah. I, thought I thought they were. Zero. Yes, ATF is reviewing it now. Oh, gosh. I'm saying he, that the politicians, Kimberly, okay. did zero. I, I get it, but I think it's an oversimplification to say okay. and try to pigeonhole this and say this is uh, NRA. Not the NRA members, but the NRA. I mean, the NRA members are represented by the NRA, and I don't think no, they, because they the don't NRA... like this any more than anyone else, but they don't want you to take their guns so they can't Nobody be there to defend to, their family point... or their loved ones. And thank God the guy of law-abiding patriot came in and stepped up to oh, the plate if come in and in was time, courageous. You know, this is the argument that says, oh, a good guy with a gun will stop a bad guy with a gun. Well, the, the, the good guys with the guns weren't there in time to stop 26 people from losing their lives. Well, they but, what but, I'm but saying to you is... There was 50 in the church, at and the moment, he did help. At the moment, what we have... He was running away. At, at the moment, what we have is a situation where the NRA reacts to people who are on their right, who want even less in terms of gun control. So they always are pushing and pushing and pushing. Nothing, absolutely I, nothing well, in terms of gun control. Just concerns. lastly, I can't let you get away with this, Juan. To say that the shooter was already running away when this heroic guy right, stepped was. in with a legally By his purchased own account. weapon By and his chased own him around oh, and no, that's saved after. future carnage from right. happening future. to denigrate his heroism is oh, inappropriate. Oh, please. Okay. Denigrate no one's heroism. What I'm saying to you is he was leaving, so let's not... Oh, he was already usual. leaving? This okay. is, so this is a farce to say, oh... That's usual. That, this is where it ends up. Let's celebrate. No agreement.